Imani and I am back with another video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button right down below. Hit that post notification bell so you know when your girl is uploading like duh. Give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below. As you guys can see from the title today, this is gonna be a get ready with me chit chat video. We're gonna talk about Instagram. We're gonna talk about being a micro influencer. We're gonna talk about my life updates. So if you're interested, keep on watching. Hey y'all, so I decided to do this get ready with me chit chat just because I haven't done one in so long, honestly. Um, and yeah, so. I feel like it's time to chit chat, chitter or chatter with you guys. So yeah, so like I said, um, I haven't done one of these in so long. So I just felt like this was like the right time to just chit chat with you guys, give you guys like a life update, talk about just many different things. Um, as you can see from the title, I'm gonna talk about like changes with Instagram and life as a micro influencer so I guess that like ties in with my life update um and yeah getting ready for a game this is our last preseason game um so just getting ready for that um I need to like put a timer on I'm gonna give myself to 11 30 to do my makeup only because I have to leave the house by one o'clock today because the game is in Ontario and it's going to take me like an hour and a half just to get there. I don't really like to stress because LA traffic is a and so um, I don't really like sitting in traffic like that. First of all, my biggest pet peeve is me being late and others being late when they're meeting me. So like I start to have like a pure panic attack when I'm in the car and I'm running late. Like it really, it like it really does something to my soul. <laughs> so I know that like I have to leave extra, extra early. But the perks of leaving early is that it's the arena is like across the street from a Canes and I freaking love raising Canes. Plus it's like across the street from a mall. So it's like if I have extra time, like super extra time, me and one of my teammates, we're just going to go to the mall and hang out and stuff like that. Um, hold on. I'm trying to read this email from a brand. Sorry, Okay, so now that that email is done and sent, um, I guess we could just start talking about my life as a micro influencer. Um, so yeah, I feel like I talk about this a lot. Um, if you follow me on YouTube, 
for a while, then you know that I work with different brands. Now, some things are just gift for pro uh, gift for product, gift for post, and then some of the things are paid. And I feel like for me, it's a kind of like 50-50. Um, I get a lot of paid brand deals for my Instagram. If you don't follow me, y'all should. Follow your girl at I am Nia Imani. Um, but yeah, I feel like I get a lot of paid brand deals on my Instagram just because my Instagram is the, um, it is the, um, social media page that has the most followers. Um, I feel like personally for me, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I feel like it's a little harder to get brand deals on YouTube, like paid brand deals on YouTube. Sorry. Oh my gosh. This is like copyright um i just feel like personally for me it's a little harder to get paid um paid brand deals on youtube i have gotten some but just a lot of times it's like um it's just a little bit harder for me to generate that than on Instagram, which I'm not complaining. I am a small YouTuber. I just hit a thousand subscribers like last month. So I know everything takes time, but for me, when I think about gift for gift for post um, collaborations, I just think about it in this aspect. That's less money I have to spend on whatever product it is. Now, granted, it has to benefit me, one. Like, it has to be products that I actually can use, actually, you know, want, and stuff like that. Um, but, but yeah, like, it just, like I said, it has to benefit me, and it has to make sense for my niche. So, like, on YouTube, even on Instagram, I, call, I consider myself, like, a lifestyle, beauty, fashion, content creator, micro-influencer. Be just because lifestyle, this is, like, more of a lifestyle video. When I vlog, that's more of a lifestyle video. And then like my hauls and unboxings and stuff like that, like that goes under the beauty fashion category. And now granted, I'm not saying accept everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying to accept things that make sense for you and your brand. Don't accept things just to be accepting things. I feel like a mistake that I made when I first started taking my Instagram very seriously is I collabed with Flat Tummy Tea. And if you know, everybody and their mama collabed with Flat Tummy Tea at one point in their life. But personally, but personally, I just felt like, you know, none of those, none of those um, collaborations was real. No one actually used Flat Tummy Tea and you know they were just throwing money at every any and everybody just to get their their products seen on social media um now and i mean granted that's great for them but like realistically speaking the products were trash like i'm gonna keep it above the products was trash i actually did try flat tummy tea and there was another like one of those little weight loss teas that to me that I personally felt like was way better than flat tummy tea. But because I felt like I was just so geeked that a brand reached out to me that I didn't even care about if the product actually worked, if it didn't, all of that good stuff. So, yeah, that was a mistake that I made in the beginning. And I can say like, if you are in the beginning stages of becoming a content creator or you want to become a influencer, content creator, don't accept things just because, you know, especially if they're like throwing money at you. Like you want to build a genuine relationship with your followers and your subscribers. And I felt like I was lying to my followers. And I feel like my followers knew that I was lying to them because all you saw in your timeline at that time was flat tummy tea, you know? So I now, I'm like, I'm very, very honest with y'all. Those of y'all that are subscribed to my channel, like y'all know, even if I am being sent something from a brand and it don't feel right, the quality is trash, it don't fit, I'm going to let y'all know that, you know? So 
you know, that's that. But I know that there are brands, some companies that basically give you a script of what to say, how to say it, what you can't say. And honestly, it just depends. If you're one of those people that's for the bag and for the bag only, by any means do that. I just personally, for me, I don't really like that because if, if the item is trash, like if the quality is trash, I should be able to say it's trash. Don't order this specific item from this brand. That doesn't mean that the brand in general is trash. That just means this specific item is trash. You get what I'm saying? So there's that. Um, a lot of people want to know um, like how I work with brands and stuff like that. Um, I've made a video about this and I feel, and so I'll like tag it up here and I feel like I've mentioned it in other videos as well. But for me, because I feel like I'm a smaller content creator, brand, it's a 50-50. Brands reach out to me and I also reach out to brands. I, I feel like, you know, I'm doing this on my own. I don't have a, a manager for this. Um like for like my micro influencer stuff i don't have a manager for that i'm doing that myself and so i feel like you know in order for me to really get seen by brands i have to put in the work as well so i i find the brands emails um whoever their influencer relations person is i find their email and i um I, 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 you know, basically pitch myself to them. I do have a media kit. Um, it's nothing extraordinary. Like, it's nothing. Sorry. It's just game day stuff. Okay. Sorry, y'all. It's just so much. Game day, between, game day, I have to like constantly be on my phone, constantly checking my email because like at any given moment, things can change. Um, but yeah, I reach out myself and brands reach out to me. Now, how I go about finding brand email, like the influencer relations person's email. Um, I, like I said, I've talked about this before. So if you want a more in-depth video, go watch that video. Um, but um I basically find their, e there's two ways I find the emails. The easiest way, well, sometimes it's not really the easiest way, but I'll use, I'll use, okay, I use LinkedIn and I also DM brands on Instagram, okay? A lot of times they don't, e they don't respond back on, on Instagram, but then a lot of times they do and they are, they do give you the brand um, email. Now, sometimes they'll give you like a generic influencers at such their brand.com email. Um, and that's when LinkedIn comes into play. Now for LinkedIn, you do have to pay for the membership and stuff like that. Um, but what I do on LinkedIn is I go on LinkedIn, I type in the brand. Um, okay, let's say it's, what's that? Soft soap, because that's what I'm looking at. The body wash I use. So say I'm looking for the soft soap person's email. I go to LinkedIn and I typed in soft, soft soap. Then I go into people, like the people that work or whatever it says. From there, I type in influencer relations because that's the people that you want to get in contact with. And then you'll see those people. Um, I'll try to find a person that's like US based or whatever the case may be. And then I'll pitch myself to them through the um, private messenger on LinkedIn. And then a lot of times they'll respond and say, hey, my email is such and such and such and such. And they'll, they'll, and then that's how I'll receive their email. And they say, you know, like, we'd we'll love to work with you. Or sometimes they just don't respond. But listen, closed mouths don't get fed. And so at the end of the day, I'm just, you know, like I'm putting myself out there just in case, you know? <clears throat> So that's how I find brand emails. Like I said, sometimes I'll DM them. Sometimes I'll, um, okay, I'll do that. 
if I have extra time before I leave. So, yes. Um, like I said, DMing them, it's a 50-50. Like, sometimes you they'll respond, sometimes they won't. Or sometimes, like, like, I, like I told this story plenty of times, I, pretty little things, actual Instagram actually reached out to me. And that's how I started um, working with pretty little thing. And so, yeah, I just feel, first off, I'm very thankful for Pretty Little Thing to keep it a buck with y'all because they were the first, like, fashion brand to reach out to me and actually work with me and invite me to events and stuff like that. Like, so I'm very blessed for them. Um, but yeah, now, yeah, that's really all I really have to say about, you know, how I work with brands. Like, I feel like that's like... The number one question I get. Um, but yeah, things take time, you know. And I feel like with, you know, being a micro-influencer, content creator, whatever you want to consider me. I feel like, I feel like, you know, these beginning stages, like you need resume builders. You know, some people get lucky and they just blow up from one YouTube video or blow up for one Instagram post and their career skyrockets from there. You have to, but if you're not that person, because I'm not that person, I just feel like you have to be able to accept the resume builders because when you make a media kit, you're not going to have nothing to put, you know, they're not going to know what brands you've worked with before and what brands you haven't, you know, so accepting things that's not for pay in the beginning is okay, you know, I don't want you to feel like that's not okay, because it is okay, you know, there's first of all, there's a lot of even big YouTubers and influencers that don't really get paid, you know, for certain collaborations that they do. I know a lot of people say that they worked with Re Revolve and they don't pay them. But let's not mention, let's not forget that Revolve's clothes as like $200 for a, for a pair of pants. So it's kind of like, well, look what you're getting. You know, you're getting like great quality clothes from a great brand. So it's like I said, you have to do what's best for you. No one can really tell you what's best for you because everyone's journey is different you know what i'm saying um so you know you have to just do what's best for you don't feel bad because you're not getting brand deals in the beginning or somebody else that you started out at the same time just blew up and you and you're still you know on that building stage everyone's timing is different it's all you know, in God's hands or whoever you believe in, it's always in the higher power's hands. When it's your time, it's going to be your time. But make sure when it is your time, you're ready, okay? Because once that door opens and you sit on that seat, on that roller coaster, it's only up from there for you, okay? So you have to just be prepared for those moments. But at the same time, these little gift, you know, products for posts, situations built made you work and built your resume and built your skill so that when these when it's time for you to take off you're already prepared you're already ready for that you're already you already know how this go you know so like it's not like you're learning as you go when you reach the top you know so there goes my little motivation little speech for y'all right there um Instagram, let's talk about it. Instagram is changing. Um, Instagram is changing, y'all. So if you don't already, you need to make sure that your, your Instagram is on a business creator page because there is a lot of things changing for, for um, Instagram right now. A lot of things. So if you don't, if you don't know, Instagram has like, you can either ha keep your page as a personal page or you can keep your page, um, you can keep your page open. I mean, you can keep your page as a personal page or you can turn it into a business creator page. Sorry, I, my mind was elsewhere. That's what I was trying to say. Um, personally, I say put your Instagram as a, 
as a creator page. And the reason why I say that is because if you do want to become an influencer, um, content creator, or even if you have a business and you just want to share things with people like business tips and stuff like that, or your products, the best part about the influ like the business creator page for Instagram is that you see your insights. So you know, like, when people are like when people are most active on like on Instagram, like your followers, um, what posts did good, what posts didn't do good. So you kind of know like I should post more stuff like this rather than posting more stuff like that. Um, but yeah, but I say that it's changing because now I feel like Instagram. In the beginning, Instagram was all fun and games, right? Like when Instagram first came out, it was real cute, it was real organized. You didn't have to think that much to work Instagram. Now it's like you need a college degree, a master's, a doctorate for Instagram, literally. Instagram changes every single day, every single week, every single month, and every single year. Like I see so many videos on people telling people about the Instagram algorithm and no tea, no shade to them. The moment they post that video, something else has has changed for Instagram, like literally. And like I said, no no shade to people that make videos like that because in some aspects they are helpful, but there is no real way of how to break the Instagram algorithm. Like I'ma just keep it a hundred with y'all. There is no real way. You know what works for you know Sally Sue is not working for John. And what works for John is not working for me. And what works for me is not going to work for you. You know, everybody's everybody's journey, and that's for every social media platform. Everyone's journey is different on these social media platforms. You know, everybody's niche and the type of videos they do or the type of posts they post is different for everybody. Because it's just like, okay... I do like fashion content. Sometimes my videos do fantastic. Sometimes my videos don't do fantastic. Sometimes my posts on Instagram get thousands of likes. And then sometimes they really don't. Like Instagram, I really don't even know how to explain how I feel about Instagram. I feel like how I feel about Instagram is kind of how I feel about TikTok. Like... As much as I love Instagram and thankful for Instagram to bless me with the opportunity to monetize my page, which I'll get to that in a second, it's kind of one of those things that's like a curse and a blessing because it's just like as a as a content creator, micro influencer, it kind of sucks when not every post gets seen. And I think that that's what it more so is on Instagram. Like the way that they have changed their algorithm makes it so that not every post is seen. And I feel like everyone has talked about that. And they try to tell you like, oh, use hashtags. Use use all 30 hashtags. Now it's now they're saying like, no, only use um, three to five hashtags. Then it's, oh, put the hashtags in your, in your caption. Then it's no, put the hashtags in the comments. Then it's, you know, um, you gotta go to, then it's, you gotta go to the hashtags and, and like pictures and make comments. And then it's, oh, you gotta, you know, be on Instagram for 30 minutes before you post, engage with as many people and then post and then, and then, um, Go off your Instagram after 30 minutes and then it's going to, you know, you're, it's going to boost your post. There's so many different myths for Instagram and no one really knows what the truth is. I don't even think Instagram knows what the truth is. I just feel like stay true to yourself when it comes to Instagram, when it comes to any social media platform, stay true to yourself. You know, don't get discouraged because you one one post got a million likes and then the next post only got 5,000. You know, like don't get down on yourself because at the end of the day, it is what it is. Everyone's channels on Instagram right now. I mean, like everybody's Instagram pages are struggling right now. You know, like 
even the biggest of the biggest people like their instagram probably not the kardashians but you know regular people that don't have a tv show and stuff you know like everyone's instagrams is going through it, it's changing it's doing a lot you know so don't get down on yourself because instagram is like not giving you play you know what i'm saying i just feel like it's you have good days you have bad days and as personally for me i feel like right now i'm in like a bad zone a bad a bad wind you know um with my social media posts like my youtube and for instagram actually and for tiktok truly i'm in like this little i'm in this little dry phase and it is what it is it's no shame in my game i'ma still post what i post and i'ma still make my money so you know um but instagram being monetized now and monetizing people's channels i am thankful for that because you think about it and you make you do all this stuff you know make all this content for for instagram and unless you're working with a brand you was not getting paid for that you know what i'm saying like granted you shouldn't be doing stuff just to get paid for it but it's a great like pat on the back when you can receive a check for something that you genuinely love to do like me with dancing i genuinely well <laughs> i genuinely like to dance okay um and i just feel like you know it's a great it's a great opportunity when you can get paid for something that you like love to do you know um so you know, with Instagram, first I was blessed to have, you know, they started um, doing live, um, what are they called? Badges, badges on live. So like you go live, basically how big O is. You go live, people buy little badges for you. I think the top badge is like $3.99 or whatever. And when that came out, I was blessed to be one of the selected pages that had the opportunity to get milestones so regardless if people bought badges on my live or not once i did certain my um milestones which basically were like mini challenges once i did some of those instagram was paying me regardless so i think like the first one it was like go live for like 15 minutes get a hundred dollars and all you had to do was turn on badges did that then the second one was like go live with someone else for 30 minutes, turn on the badges and you get like 250. Then it was, and so it, was, it just went up and up or like 150. And then it was like, you go live for 15 minutes once a week for four weeks, you get 250. So all in all, I don't have no problem with sharing with you guys how much I got paid from that because I feel like a lot of people would want to know in general. So let's go to my creator badges let's see estimated earnings so th throughout that period of time from the from their bonuses like their milestone bonuses instagram themselves paid me 750 dollars 750 dollars just to basically kind of like promote the idea of instagram live badges and then I made um, like $30 and like $32 and, and 76 cents in badges. Um, I haven't gone live, honestly, in a minute. So I honestly should probably do that. But yeah, so that's what Instagram live badges is. Now this week, which I'm going to say again, follow me on Instagram because I'm posting, basically going to try to post reels almost every day this month because I have bonuses on my Instagram Reels and they go based off of how many views I receive. So I got one, two, I posted, I posted three Reels so far. And so it's basically as many views as I get, that's how much I get paid, but I can get paid up to, I believe $600 by November 5th. Um, I, it says, hold on, let me go to it because I want to get it right. Um, it says here that, sorry, it's taking so long. Yeah, it says bonus plays. I have, I have 
to achieve 1.75 million, which is like, I've never really, I have, I have not hit a million views on my reels yet, but luckily for this, this bonus, it's all of my reels co combined, but I still, I don't even think any of my reels combined has hit a million, but hopefully within this month, hopefully one reel just blows up and hits a million. But anyway, I have to reach, um, 1.75 million views in total or plays, I should say plays. And I will receive the max bonus, which is $600. And that my deadline is November 5th. So when you have this creator page on YouTube, I mean, on Instagram, it will, it will show you this stuff and will tell you all of this stuff. It just will like randomly pop up. My cousin, he got his bonus last week. And then I got mine, I want to say, I guess, I guess it was October 5th. Um, so basically, if you have a creator page on Instagram, be on the lookout for that. I know they said that they're trying to give like creators like a million dollars or something like that. Like they have like a fund that they are trying to give. But like I said, it's always like a nice incentive when you can get paid to do what you actually love. And I mean, especially if you're just doing this just to be doing it, like you already do this, it's such a dope thing that you could get paid from this. Um, also, I am not monetized as of yet on YouTube. Um, haven't been blessed with that yet. I still need so many watch hours, y'all, like so many. I think I need like 2,000 because my watch hours have gone down because I guess the videos that I posted like last year, like they're coming off of, off of my 365 days time span. So I need like 2,000 more watch hours y'all to get the 4,000. So if you want to be kind and help your girl out, go watch some, some videos, you know, full, the whole video, whatever. But yeah, um, I'm not monetized yet, um, but I am still so happy and so blessed to have received, um, damn, I didn't even do my eyeshadow. I just realized that I am so happy and blessed to receive, you know, a thousand subscribers because that's not easy. That just means like a thousand people actually bang with what I do, which is like, Honestly, I'm one of those people that like to sit back and reflect and I'm just like, yo, that's really bizarre that 33.3, I think, K people follow me on Instagram and a thousand and I want to say a thousand thirty nine people subscribe to my channel. Like, that's really bizarre that I kind of have like, I guess you can say an impact or just like an interesting, interesting content that people really want to pay attention. It's just like kind of bizarre to me you know because I used to be and I'm still that girl I will sit and watch YouTube videos all day long like I'll watch YouTube more than I'll actually watch um actual TV shows you know so it's like bizarre to me that people actually want to watch me and contribute to my growth and stuff like that so i really do appreciate it i know like i say that a lot and i feel like a lot of people say it but i genuinely i genuinely mean what i say when i say that i um actually really appreciate all the love and support i receive because like i said i'm still growing i you know and i feel like there's so much of me that i can share with people and um but so that's what I really want to do. Like, I want to share with people. I want to help people. I know that, like, one of my top videos, besides my car video, which is, like, very, very weird to me because I'm not a car girl. But um, one, of the, one of my other top videos is um, me talking about becoming an NBA dancer and how to make a team. And just to see that video in itself blow up, and I posted it a year ago. Like I posted it when I was in quarantine and half the teams didn't even have auditions. But this year was the year that the video like took off because 
I feel like every NBA team had auditions for their um, their dance team. Um, and I feel it was crazy that that video really blew up. There was girls who are rookies on my team that literally came to me and was like, yo, I saw your video and I like watched your video before the auditions. And I was just like, it's kind of like bizarre, like that people found my video, was DMing me about that video. So I feel like I do want to do something and help a lot of girls achieve and guys, because I know that there's a lot of co-ed teams achieve their goals in becoming NBA dancers. Now, the reason why I only say NBA is because I never auditioned for an NFL dance, a cheerleading team, because NFL is more cheerleaders. I've never auditioned for NFL cheerleading team. I don't plan on doing that just because I'm not interested in football whatsoever. Like I know nothing about football. And I feel like for me, I have to learn the sport before I can even audition. Basketball, I knew the sport. My whole, actually it's crazy because my whole entire family are is like a sports fanatics. Like my whole family. And I think that I'm the only one in my family that knows nothing about football, which is kind of bizarre. Like one of my cousins, she's obsessed with football and I'm obsessed with basketball. And then when it comes to the other sport, both of us is just like, huh? Um, when she probably knows a little bit more about basketball than I actually do about football. Like, I only know the quarterback. Isn't that the one that called the numbers? And I only know, like, a running back, and that's the one that run with the ball. Other than that, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know anything. Um, I, can't t I can't name notes. I can't really name, like, five teams. I probably, no, actually, that's a lot. I can. I can name five teams, but... Yeah, long story short, I don't really plan on auditioning for, I have to sneeze. <clears throat> oh, bless me. I don't plan on auditioning for a NFL team. Moral of my story. It's just, I don't know. Like, I don't, I feel like that would just be so much work. Not even dance wise, just just learning the sport itself and you're an ambassador of the team the organization the sport so i have to know something about football you know so back to what i was saying that's the reason why i only talk about nba on my channel um I mean, granted, I feel like my tips could be universal, but I know that NFL. <clears throat> Here goes the allergies, y'all. They're like mowing outside. So I knew this was going to happen. I should have took allergy medicine. Um, But yeah, they, um, I feel like football, um, their, their whole audition process is just very different, but I always tell people this. If I was super into football, the only team that I can see myself auditioning for is the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. And granted, they're not my style, like my favorite style of dance, but I just love what they stand for, like the girls and stuff like that. And I watch their show, like I tune in weekly, okay? Like that's my favorite time of year, you know, is when their show is on. Um... But anyway, yeah, so I want to help more with that. Com actually, comment down below if you think that I should do a YouTube series on here talking about how to make an NBA team and, and, and stuff like that. I, I know I have a video, a genuine, vi like a general video about that, but I feel like I should go into detail about certain things and then I can bring in my teammates and girls that I know on different NBA teams to come in and like, you know, like talk about, you know, just their process and stuff like that, their experience. Um, but yeah, comment down below and let me know if you want to see stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I don't... Mm, I don't really know what else to talk about. Um, I thought I had like so much to say. Granted, I feel like I talked a lot. I said a whole bunch of stuff. Um, 
as y'all can see i'm literally just bronzing my face today i'm not doing the contour like i did in the other video the only reason why in my game day makeup video i contoured my face like actually contoured my face is because um that video can be helpful for girls that's auditioning and need to know how to do their makeup you know which i'm so mad at that video guys so originally i filmed that video posted it and it posted with no sound like in it saved with no sound and i could have sworn that when i reviewed the video it had sound like i could have sworn i did a voiceover and everything i'm basically gonna have to remake that video like i already know that um but i posted it anyway because like i said a lot of people during playoffs have been asking me about like you know more game day um like more game day type of content and i just clearly never did it during um playoffs i never did it during playoffs just like i said playoffs is such a busy time like you don't know when your team is going to get um you don't know when your team is going to lose and get eliminated from playoffs so that's the reason why I just never really took the time to do um, content during that time. Plus, I went to Hawaii. Oh, my gosh. My nose. I'm going to use my Tarte palette. If you watched my Tarte haul, then you've seen this. Um, my Tarte unboxing, I should say. Um... But yeah, I um I went to Hawaii. There was just so much going on during that time and I was just like, yo, bro, I, I literally cannot. Like, I literally can't. Um hmm, I like the fact that they actually give you like a little like makeup look. I'm gonna try this out. But yeah, I um it was just a lot going on during that time, so that's why I just did not post. Um during that also that's the reason why I took a hiatus from YouTube. I didn't post really that much after I got back from my trip. Um cuz like I said, there was just a lot going on. Ugh, I need to wash my brushes, but at least I can do that this week cuz I don't have any more games until the 23rd. Okay. I need one of those like fast um Oh, this is pretty much clean. Um but yeah, I took a hiatus because there was just so much going on at that time. So yeah, so now I'm like trying to produce all of this game day content. I'm going to pick back up once regular season starts, which it starts on the 23rd for us. Funny girl. Which one is funny girl? All over the lid. Oh, I need to start with. Yeah. Oh, I have to prep. I have to prime. Yeah, Y'all, why am I like, see, this is why I'm like, when it comes to my makeup, I literally cannot multitask, but I am doing good on time. Um yeah but i'm gonna pick back up on my game day content um for regular season like i said regular season for us starts on the 23rd um which i'm super excited about like preseason is fun but also preseason like no one really comes to preseason games so which is bizarre to me because preseason games are so much cheaper than going to regular season games. So that's kind of like bizarre to me. I've never really understood that that concept, but hey. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pick back up on my game day content. So comment down below what else you want to see. Um, I can kind of pretty much tell y'all what else I have lined up. I'm going to do a morning routine. A nighttime routine. I was going to do a get ready with me, but this is pretty much that. Um, well, not really, because you're not going to see me put on my clothes and all of that stuff. Um, I was going to do like a game day, um, a game day morning routine. Um, and 
did I say that? And then like a uh, game app, game day, nighttime routine. I feel like I've said that, but I feel like I'm repeating myself. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I have lined up for the rest of my game day content. If there's other game day content that you guys want to see that I haven't posted and that clearly I'm not thinking about, um, comment down below. I'm also going to, like I said, I'm trying to do reels as much as possible. So let me comment down below and let me know some real ideas. Like what should I, um, what should I, what type of reels should I post? Um, clearly from my email, I am doing a Halloween reel with Boohoo. I can actually announce that because I just got the email and also I'm collabing with them on a YouTube video because they have a new collection dropping. I don't know if it's announced yet, so I'm not going to really talk about that just yet, which collection it is, but they have an, they have a collection dropping next week. And I am going to do a rev like a haul slash review on that on here. So yes, the Halloween one will be a real, and the other one will be a um, <clears throat> a what you call it. Also for Halloween, y'all, I found like the cutest outfit. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted two different costumes. Um. They're from Fashion Nova. It's like really nothing that special. But it's like the Safari Guy Girl um, costume. And I just think that that's so cute. I feel like I'm at the age now that I'm over the like costume costumey. You know, like I feel like if I had like a boyfriend or like a family, then doing the costume costumey type of um, costume for Halloween would fit me. But I'm at the phase where I'm like, I don't want nothing like too costumey. And I feel like the Safari Girl one, I could wear that outfit. Like I could wear that outfit out or like to an audition, like the shorts to an audition, not really. The top, I actually love this color. Like it's a dark brown, but I love it. Go ahead, Tori. All right. So once again, shout out to y'all for sending me that, that PR package. Um... I'm like reading the thing to see what else they're saying.